It's a happy Sabbath. I would like happy to, day. Uh, I would like to welcome us to this Sabbath worship. And before we do anything, uh, let's believe as we pray. Thank you, our most gracious and everlasting Master in heaven, for the gift of the Sabbath, O Lord. Lord Almighty, we come before you as your children who are prone to sin and we are weak. Lord Almighty, we can that you make in this earth. Without you coming to our rescue, Lord, we cannot make it. That's why this morning we want to seek you and seek your face on this day that you sanctified, blessed, and rested on it, O Lord. But Lord, when the blessings are going to flow, let us be counted among the number, Lord. That you open our eyes and that we may move in the direction that pleases heaven. And that at no point in time should we go back to the, to the roads that made us get into sin. 
but always just to walk in the paths that our forefathers walked in in the days of old, Lord God. Lord, we might want to pray for the Holy the family and the everybody, Lord, on the nation, Kenya, and the world at large, O oh God. Lord, we might have been hit with a pandemic, the coronavirus, O oh Lord. But we have this one hope that when we trust in you, in due time, Lord, everything will go back to normal for your own glory. Lord Almighty, I pray that you may protect and provide a hedge around your children so that, Lord, the Satan might not make them be, the, be his captives, O oh God. Lord Almighty, grant us your desires in the mighty name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Thank you. I, I want to read a verse here with us, then I will get going. I just want to, I was reading some verse here and uh, it's, it's really interesting. Paul writes to the Corinthians, if you look at the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, in the verses 27, it says, let me begin by, from verses 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are, we are incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as an uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. The reason why I'm, uh, this verse, if you read, if you read verses twenty-seven, it is very sad. Paul says that, but I keep my body, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest, they, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. That Paul says that he is preaching the word of God, but the most important thing, or the, 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 uh, the, the, most th the, the thing that he's doing, or something that he really reflects in his life is that, let him not preach to others, then when the time comes, he's being cast away from the price. That after preaching all this word and we do everything that is that is in accordance to the will of God, we find ourselves in a situation that we are being cast away because we are not faithful in what we are doing. So my prayer this morning is that in everything we are doing, in every moment that you find yourself on these during this time and the entire in your life in a, at large, ensure that you do everything putting your body into subjection, not subjection to anybody else, but to the greater power. If you read Romans 13, in Romans 13, there's also something interesting there. I'd uh, like us to read Romans 13 from verses, uh, I just want us to read verses uh, 1 and 2. Let every soul be subject unto the, unto the higher, higher, higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. You see, uh, Paul says that let he want to put his body under subjection. And he comes in the, in the Romans, it says that let every soul be subject unto the higher power. And it went, it goes on and describes this for that there is no power but of God. For there is no power of God. That's the power that we should be subject to. That we subject all our hearts, all our the, the all of our being unto that power, the higher powers, the powers that be are ordained of God. And he says, there is this point that he says. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. The moment to resist the, this power of God, we will get unto ourselves damnation, or rather we'll get unto ourselves some, let me call it a curse or sort. We'll get unto ourselves in a situation whereby we are going to be cast away because we have resisted this power. So let's always trust in this power. Let's do everything faithfully. So that uh, at the close of time, God will always be there to reward us according to what you did right in the, on this earth. Otherwise, I'd uh, like us to pray as we close the uh, short sharing. Uh, let's uh, believe as we pray. A wonderful Father, most gracious Lord in heaven, it's a good morning and a good Sabbath indeed that we come before you and your word tells us that whosoever resisted that power resisted your, ordi your ordinance, or ordinance, God. We pray that, Lord, we may not be in that group that is going to resist your power, the higher power, the power that is ordained of you, yourself, O oh God. Lord Almighty, we pray that let that power always reign in our lives and always to give us 
a direction to follow. I'm praying for this viewer who is going to who is watching this uh, who is watching us live on Facebook and those who are with us on Zoom platform. Oh God, that Lord may you bless them and everybody that this message is going to reach at Lord. May they get this message for your own glory and use them each and every moment and use it for your own glory in their lives. May your love be manifested in us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I do pray, trusting and believing. Amen. So thank you for that, Allah. We I'm going to welcome Gift to take us through the mission reading, the last for this quarter. So Gift, you're welcome. Uh, thank you, Lashem, and happy Sabbath to you all. My name is Gift. I'm going to take you through the mission reading. Now, before I go to that mission reading, uh, I want to briefly uh, introduce uh, the story of this uh, old man, rather, uh, a, a man who lost his job, his family, uh, because of the earthly doings of maybe alcohol and drinking, a cigarette. Uh, he lost his job, his family, and now we've met a good Samaritan who shows in the way to Jesus Christ. And I'll go to that story so that you can know into details what happened. Uh, the title is Befriending a Shoe Shiner. That is the title. And it reads, The Man Shining Shoes Caught Philip. Attention in Cyprus capital, uh, Nicosia. Uh, the stale color of tobacco smoke clung his clothes. This, this guy was a, was a smoker. His hands shook from alcoholism. Philip didn't ask for shoe shine. How are you doing, my friend? Philip asked, speaking in Bulgarian language, do you need any help? The man, Julian Jankov, looked surprised. This guy uh, looked surprised, the shoe shiner, who is, a, who is a smoker. No one had asked him such a question since he moved from Bulgaria a decade earlier. It was pleasant to hear someone expressing an interest in him. He was interested that someone was uh, talking of uh, something else apart from his job of uh, making uh, shoes shine. But Julian, re Julian remained silent. Jesus loves each one of us, no matter what situation we are in. Philip quoted that. He said he gave his life for us. Now, the mention of Jesus Christ impressed this Julian. The next day, Philip returned. How are you doing, my friend? He asked, do you need any help? Julian was surprised that the stranger had returned. Again, Philip didn't ask for his shoes to be polished. Instead, he encouraged Julian not to waste his money on alcohol and cigarettes. Now, this guy starts uh, getting into his life a bit by bit by encouraging this, uh, this guy. It was, a, it, was a, it was wise to put some money aside for saving his sake. Every day, Philip spoke with Julian. Eventually, they exchanged introductions and began to converse. Julian said he had worked in construction after arriving with his family in Cyprus, but he had not lost his job. He had lost his job and was kicked out of the house for drinking. My family rejected me, he said. One by one, even my closest friends left me. Now, one day, Julian led his friends to the abandoned uh, building where he slept. The sight brought tears to Philip's eyes. Julian slept on a, on a hard floor. He owned nothing but the clothes that he was wearing. His income went into alcohol and cigarettes. How you, you have gone so far, my friend, he said, softly. You have ruined your life and you need to do something about it. You need help to God. Nothing is impossible. Amen. Nothing is impossible. You know God loves you, he says. Philip began to talk about God and to pray with Julian. Julian sensed that Philip saw something valuable in him. He began to see God's, uh, God's love in his life. One day, Philip said, soon you'll be 50 and you have only served Satan. It's time to give your life to Christ and he, and he will bless you. Julian wanted to change. I'm ready to give my life to God, he replied. Although he had drunk heavily for 35 years, he gave up alcohol that day. Although he smoked heavily for 35 years, he quit a week earlier. Philip and uh, Julian studied the Bible together. The two men attended Bulgarian language Bible study groups that Philip led in various places in Cyprus. Julian learned that Philip, a narrative Bulgarian, was, was a full-time lay preacher employed by the Seventh Adventist Church on the Mediterranean island. 
eight people have had been baptized through Philip's work in three years, a significant number for a country where the Adventist church has only 103 members in a population of 1.1 million. Julian began uh, the ninth we uh, became the ninth Baptist ba ba baptism when he plunged beneath the waters of the Mediterranean Sea on June 23rd, 2018. Amen. After being baptized, good things started happening in Julian's life. He found work in a, in a hotel kitchen that allowed him to take off Sabbaths, amen, a rarity in Cyprus. His family welcomed him back home. He tells everyone who will listen about his love for God. Now, from the day of my baptism, I can't stop praising God, amen, for what he has done in my life and what he is ready to do for every person. Julian said in an interview, Whenever I meet a new person, I like to share my story. I say, if God is, did it for me, he can do it for you too. Amen. That is a story that uh, Julian tells uh, with his friend. And uh, it's an encouragement to us all as a Seventh-day Adventist. A question is asked to you. Who is that friend that you preach to so that you can bring him or her closer to the feet of Jesus? We, we need to, uh, to sow and reap many harvests from the fields. The work awaits us, and if only we commit our lives to Jesus Christ, then will Jesus Christ help us uh, to do so. Let us believe and pray. God and our Master in heaven, we thank you for this Sabbath day. We thank you for the sharing and the miracles you do and the testimonies that are living. We pray and we are certain that you will always reign your Holy Spirit in our lives and give us those words that we can preach to uh, the people who know you uh, little or who don't know you, so that we can bring many to your table. I pray this short prayer between and trust in Jesus Christ's mighty name. That's a powerful mission sharing that you've gotten from our brother. And uh, the most important thing is that let's apply these things in our daily lives. Let's always feel that uh, urge to preach to one friend that is out there, just to listen to this wonderful message, just like um, uh, the book of Matthew 28, verses 19, the Great Commission that was given. And it was given to everybody that we teach, we teach, baptize. And uh, that is the sole duty of man that we have that we, we are remaining with so that this the return of uh, Christ when Christ comes he finds us prepared not that we are trying to prepare you remember last Sabbath we told Christ is coming for those who are prepared not those who are trying to prepare so let's always be in that group that are prepared that even if Christ will come today uh, we are rest assured that uh, we are going to be in that number otherwise uh, so much into that I'll, uh, I'd like us to get down and uh, also uh, listen to something from our lesson discussion our teachers are not in and uh, I thought they could join us soon but uh, we can't stop there we'll just continue if they'll find us along the way that will be to our advantage so I want us to go into that and uh, um, we are going that into that into a, in a little while, so that we also share this. We also get, we also get what what uh, the word is all about, or the lesson for this last quarter is all about. Uh, let's go to. I'm going to share a screen with us, so that we also we also share this blessing together. I uh, thank you. So before we even do anything, I'd like us to to pray, pray as we get to the, the lesson discussion. And I'm I'm really requesting that um we follow together. If you have a question, you feel free to ask. That is the the most important thing about lesson discussion. You ask a question, then do this. That is the beauty of it all. So I'll. Uh, I'll pray. Rather, let me request Jefferson. Jefferson Kebande, please pray with us. 
as we begin the lesson discussion. And mute yourself as you pray. Yes, pray with us. Okay, I think I'm allowed of enough. Yeah. I kind of, and my dear philosophy master, we come to you, Father. Father, so we embark on our lesson discussion, Father. We ask for your presence, Father. As you have guided us from all the programs of the day, Father. It's your, it is your Sabbath, Father. May you be with us, Father. Be with our speakers, Father. Send, send your Holy Spirit, Father, to guide them, Father. As we finish, Father, we glorify your name, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and trust. Amen. Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for sharing with us, uh, for praying with us. Uh, we are getting into the last uh, part of this quarter's lesson. That is, um, the whole of this, this quarter we've been talking about uh, how to interpret the scripture. And today we are coming to the the latter end of the lesson that is living by the word of God. And just maybe a, a quick a quick question. We, from where the screen we can see the living by the word of God, living by the word of God. So, so before we even do anything further, I would like to ask, what is the word of God? What is the word of God? Or when you, when, uh, you meet somebody who has never known about the Bible and they ask you, well, you're telling, about, you're telling me about the word of God. What is this word of God? If you have a response, just unmute yourself as we as you answer the question. Anybody? Let's go to John. Let's go to John. Let's go to John chapter one. Yes, I'm there already. Okay, you can read it. Yeah, I was I was on the way of sharing, and then you. you oh, okay, okay, okay. Respond, please. John one one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, if you ask what is the Word of God, then I'll say, the Word of God is God Himself. Amen. Any other response? Thank you. Let's also go to. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Is this verse that is uh, talking about? Uh, so that we we get to learn that the word of God that uh, we want to talk about today. That this word of God, just like gift is uh, is uh, is telling us, that the, the the word of God or the living word of God is God Himself, because it says John John says uh, I'll request that the gift please repeat the verse, the John chapter one. Gift kindly repeat repeat. Re yes, read. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, John one one. Let me go back there. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Go to verses 2. Verses 2 says, the same was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning with God. That is, that is very interesting. That, uh, that in the beginning was the word. And the, the, the most interesting part, or the most... Uh, important part that we should also grasp from that verse is that the word was with God and the word was God. And um, if, if we look at that, we realize that, um, we realize that it, the Bible it, it, uh, typically shows us that this word of God or the word of God we are talking about today is God himself. So when you talk about the, 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 uh, the word of God, then we, it's like, uh, let me say that living by the word of God is living by God in, our, in us. So God speaking to us directly and telling us on what and uh, the, the, the direction that you should always follow. That is very interesting that God shows us the direction that we should follow. When we read uh, Revelation 19 verses 13, Revelation 19, 13, 
you are there, please read it for us. 19 verses 13. Yes, anybody who is there, please read it. Okay, and it says, yes. And he was clothed, clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Thank you. That, and he was clothed, clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. You can read, uh, you can read the 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 whole of um, Revelation 19, so that we. We, we, we get the context in which it's talking okay. about. I begin from verse one. Huh? No, no, no. I'm saying if you get our own, you are on time. Read it. Okay. The whole of Revelation uh, chapter nineteen. But um, you can begin from verses ten up. You, from verses eleven, you come down. You come down up to thirteen, so that you get the context right. Revelation nineteen. Let's begin from eleven. Says. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. 12 says his eyes was flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. 13 says he was clothed with a vest, with vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Yes, we are being told that um, now I want us to come down and also uh, try to understand who is being described here. Or rather, let me ask who is being described in uh, Revelation chapter uh, chapter nineteen, verse from verses uh, eleven, when it talks about. Um, if you read from verses eleven all the way to verses thirteen, it says his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his heads were a many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Who is being described? And if you continue saying, and he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of God. Who is being described here? Yes, uh, yes, I think it's Jesus Christ. Okay. Can you, okay, can you elaborate more on the answer? Okay, I've, uh, I've read uh, verse 15, and it says, And out of his mouth got a sharp sword that is uh, with he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treaded the winepress of the fierce and wrath of Almighty God. 16, And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. That's Jesus Christ. Or, 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 uh, okay, I'm not sure. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So he has read to us all the way to verse 16, where it says, and he had the, on his vesture and his thigh and his thigh and his uh, and his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lords of Lords. So quite interesting. And it says uh, that uh, Jesus Christ is the one being Describe there. I'm also opening a chance, giving a chance to other people. Jeff, if you have something to say. Uh, I think it's Jesus Christ himself. Yes. Thank you. Let's go to Matthew. Let me, let me say Matthew, Matthew 25. Get the verse right so that we de, we de, de, de tend to know more about this word. Yes, we are correct. It's Jesus Christ, but I want us to get it well so that we can have a way of defending it. Uh, Twenty-five from verses. Uh, is it thirty-one? Can you read it from verse thirty-one? Twenty-five from verses thirty-one. A gift, please read from for us from verse 31. Okay, I'll read in the name of Jesus Christ. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. 32. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. 33 says, 
and he shall set the, the sheep on his right hand, but the goat on the left. Thank you. Thank you. You can just pause there. Then we go back to our revelation. We go back to our revelation. Let's ju just hold the uh, Matthew. We go back to Revelation. Revelation 19. And if you get to verses 13, uh, verses 13, it says, And he was clothed with a vesture, uh, and with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the, the word of God. I, I'd like us to go to verses 11. There's what I'm searching for there. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in Russia's name, he doth judge and make war. If you come to verses 25, we find the son of man, when the son of man shall come. And the verses 32 says, and before him shall he be gathered all nations and shall separate them. You see, now Jesus Christ is making the judgment. When you separate these from these, it means you are making judgment that this one should not be here, this one should not be here. So definitely we can get that the person being described as the word of God is Jesus Christ himself. Thank you very much. So I want us now to go into our lesson. At least we've understood the living by the word of God. It's like living by Jesus Christ in our lives. Jesus Christ to teach us because the Bible says, be ye perfect as even your father in heaven is perfect. So that we get, we obtain that perfection. That is all that is uh, is uh, that ma uh, that is interesting about this lesson for this quarter. That let's live uh, live by the word of God. This word of God to live in our lives, and to always ring each and every time that uh, we are on this earth. Thank you. I I like us now to go to, to get back to. Uh, to, to get back to our lesson and uh, we are going to we, we continue with where we stopped uh, that now we've we've understood the living word of God and uh, I want us to just we'll go very quickly just to understand the 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 Sabbath part and uh, the, the 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 Sabbath part and the as we proceed so our memory verse, our memory verse says, Matthew James chapter 1, verses 22. James chapter 1, verses 22. I'll read it. But be doers of the word, not hearers only. Be doer, doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving yourself, deceiving yourselves, deceiving yourselves, that is James chapter 1, verses 22 that be it but he be doers of the word and not hearers only that we the, we are being advised so james advises that uh, or uh, admonishes us that let us be doers of the word and not hearers we are living in us in a century we are living in a generation whereby we are only hearers of the word if you tell somebody about the sabbath he knows very well if you tell him about this dog, this particular teaching, that person knows it pretty well. But now the problem comes into doers of the word. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. But we, we tend to, we, we find ourselves in a situation whereby we don't practice that. That's why we are being told that let's live by the word of God, which the word of God we've described and elaborated quite well. If on our screen, you can see something there that is, and I'll read it, that the goal of any Bible study, uh, of any study of the Bible is more than acquiring head knowledge. If done properly, it will lead to heart obedience. It is an obedience that is deeper and more meaningful than just outward conformity. It will lead to a joyful faithfulness to the will of God. That, that we need to use this word. When you are studying the word of God, you need to use it in our lives. We need to apply it in each and every aspect of our lives so that we can be good in everything that we do. That we, the best method of uh, studying the Bible is, is of no use if we are not determined to live by that. There's no need we study the Bible, but we don't use it in our lives. If you're studying the Bible, ensure that you use it in your life, you apply it in your daily activities, you, uh, it, the Bible is being reflected into your life. When you see somebody, when you do something, you, you say, 
the Bible says this, and I'm doing it the same way the Bible, uh, the Bible requires or God requires, and that we grow in grace and wisdom through study of the scripture. When you study and inspire others, you know, when you study the word, you preach this word, you inspire other people, and also they come to the light of God. That's why even if you jump, maybe you will jump to the next quarter's lesson, just making friends of God, for God. You inspire others. You know, you've read the scripture. You've uh, ensure, you, and you ensure that you are now nourished spiritually. You get this one and you give it to other people also to be friends with God that already you've known. And Paul also says something that when we are preaching this word, let's ensure that for us, we are not cut from the price. Uh, I'd like us to go the, to, 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 to continue. We are on the Sabbath past and we are just making the introduction. We grow in grace and uh, that is it. We go to the Sunday part, living word of God and the Holy Spirit. I'll read this one. It says, the truths in the Bible should not only be believed, but also and especially believe, be lived. Quite interesting. But the truths in the Bible, all these things we read in the Bible, everything that we, we listen to from the Bible, they should not, that are, uh, they should not, uh, rather they should be that one, which uh, we live by it, on, not only that we believe, we be, we be believed, but also, and especially, and it says, and especially, and especially, let it be that one, that is lived in our lives that when we read the bible the truths let it not be believed only but let us also uh let us also live by it let the holy spirit work and put the bible into practice each and every time we put the bible into practice so that uh, uh so that god can always make everything right for us uh we put the bible into practice and uh, uh coming to almost the last option that is Accept the whole Bible, make the Bible you as devote time to it, learn it by word, by heart. That how we want to make the Bible ours, or how to you make the Bible yours, is that devote time to it, learn it by heart. Quite interesting. That you learn this word by heart. We make the Bible yours by learning it by heart. You've now let the Holy Spirit to work. That's why we are seeing the living word of God and the Holy Spirit. And uh, it says, to study the word of God carefully, uh, I'm reading from the Sunday part. It says, to study the word of God carefully and with the proper met method is very important. But just as important, perhaps even more so, is that we put into practice that what we have learned. That is the most important thing about the word of God, that we put into practice what we've learned. If you've learned this, you've learned about the love of Christ, let's apply it in our lives. Let us use it and let us always focus so that we ensure that word lives in us. And uh, even if we are not going to understand anything on this lesson, uh, on this on this lesson today, just get this concept that even the truths in the Bible should not only be believed, but also, and especially be lived. You realize that the the, uh, the writer has not has not thrown away or has not thrown the aspect of believing off the scent, but he has said it should not only yes we should believe in it, but we must ensure that we live by we we live we it be it be lived in our lives. Um, let the Holy Spirit work. Philippians chapter two verses fifteen. It says that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom, among whom, I'm being blocked a little bit here. Can't get a point here. Okay, Philippians chapter two, that is from verses five. It says, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Among you shine as light in the world. Amen. That let's shine like a light in the world. God, God knows that we are living in a generation or we are in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. A generation whereby truth, what is, what is you know, we are living in a world whereby what is correct or what is a, 
what is the will of God is not loved by many. And God says, yes, I know we are living in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, but among you, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Let's always shine as lights in the world. Let the Holy Spirit work in us. We've said you embrace the Bible. You let the Holy Spirit take charge in your life. You don't force it. You let the Holy Spirit to work for you. The Holy Spirit to give you a guide. The Holy Spirit to, ref to show you direction where it be. Yes, God, God works in us. He does so through the Holy Spirit, who alone gives us the wisdom to understand the Holy Scriptures. That for us to understand the Holy Scriptures, there must be that God, there must be that Holy Spirit who alone can give us the wisdom to understand it. Minus the Holy Spirit, you can read the whole Bible, we can, we can get it, but we cannot understand it. You know it well, but we can't understand. That's why we are being told that let the Holy Spirit work. And the Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 is an invitation to work out our own salvation. How should we do that? A question. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12. Maybe we read it so that uh, we can understand. Philippians 2, verses 12. I'd like some one of our, our students to, 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 to reply to that. Philippians 2, verses 12. To read for us that verse. Just reading a verse. Anybody? So that we interact together. Two verses 12. Okay, let me read it. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So we are being asked here that Philippians 2 verses 12, that is an invitation to work out our own salvation. How do we, how should we do that? How do we work out our own salvation? Yes, how do you work out our own salvation? Let me give this chance to Elder Moindi to, to respond to us. I've seen him just right now. Elder Moindi, how do we work our own salvation? Happy Sabbath. Yes, happy day. Uh, thank you, Elder Shem. Actually, I've joined you right now. I was in another platform for the lesson discussion, but I'm back. Okay, thank you. You've asked a very good question about how do you work for your own salvation? I think that's the question you have asked, the elder. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, about salvation, we need to, uh, to know what salvation. Salvation is... Uh, we can get salvation when you go to the book of Genesis chapter 3, we see there's what they call the fall of man. After there's this fall of man, Christ is coming. In chapter 3, verse 21, the blood is shed. This blood which is shed was symbolizing Jesus Christ who was going to come. And this Jesus Christ who was going to come, it was to save humanity from their, from their sinful nature. So how do you work for your own salvation? We usually say that salvation is personal. You cannot work for the salvation of other person, but you are the only person who needs to uh, recognize Jesus Christ and who needs to choose Jesus Christ as your personal savior. So working for your own salvation is choosing Jesus Christ as your personal savior throughout the days of your life. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Elder, thank you for sharing with us on that. that uh, uh, about uh, working our own salvation. I'll also give room to any other person who has a thought on how do we work our own salvation. Okay, thank you. It seems there is none. That uh, when you, we, we, you go to, when you look at Paul, or what Paul is, when Paul is advising us, or when Paul is saying that we, that is Philippians 2 verses 12, 
Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We obey this word, the, the things that you've learned, the things that the word of God that has been in, in our lives, that is the, the uh, and through this, we will get ourselves uh, be in a position to be ready for that uh, soon return of our Savior Jesus Christ. And according to Paul, studying the word of God must bring substantial changes into our lives. From verses 14, 14 and to 16, do all things without murmurings and disputings that ye may be blameless. That is what we've read in Philippians 2 verses 15, verse 16, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. The most important thing is that let the word of God change your life. You see, he says that work it without fee, without murmurings. Do th all things without murmurings and disputings. That when you are studying the word of God, when you are learning the word of God, let it transform your life. If the word of God cannot transform our lives, there's no way we are going to expect it to transform other people's lives. That is That one should be very important. That if it cannot transform your life, then it surely it won't change. Uh, it, uh, it won't bring an impact or rather the Holy Spirit is not, is not working in us. Let us change our lives and let it bring for us that change that we desire in our lives. Yes, uh, uh, let me give an opportunity. We, we, we were discussing on the Sunday, but whereby we were talking about uh, the, the living word of God and the Holy Spirit. That we've said this, for this word of God to dwell in us, for this word of God to dwell in, our, uh, in us, let the Holy Spirit work in us. For there to be an impact, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. We must let the Holy Spirit work. Let the Holy Spirit do his work in our lives. Then we'll always get to learn a lot. And the, that the Holy Spirit enlighten our, uh, enlightens our minds. That is John 14, verses 26. But the word of God, you have the word of God, but for you to get that enlightenment, then the Holy Spirit will always uh, enlighten our minds. That is John 14, verse 26. You go to John 15, verses 26. He also says that lead us to Jesus. And I want us to get this concept. Number one concept we've said, okay, uh, Gilbert, I'm giving you a chance to say something. John chapter 5, uh, that, um, that is John 15 verses 26. I'll read it very fast so that we move. We are running short of time. 15 verses 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Jesus Christ promised the disciples that he would send the comforter. And the comforter, as we know, is the Holy Spirit that would direct them unto the father and he shall and he shall testify of me so number one we've noted that if we have the holy spirit in our lives then he'll enlighten our minds number two he'll lead us to jesus he'll lead us to jesus christ just as we've read in in um, john 15 verses 26 then it also lead us to the truth that is the truth and truth alone Howbeit, when he the spirit of truth is come realize that that when the spirit of truth, so the Holy Spirit will lead us to the truth. And that is very interesting. And the Holy Spirit will give us hope and confidence. The Holy Spirit of God will give us hope and confidence, Romans 5 verses 5. And also that it, the Holy Spirit will give us joy. So those are the interesting things we've learned that this Holy Spirit, number one, enlighten our minds, lead us to Jesus, lead us also to the truth and gives us hope and confidence and also give us joy. And uh, another thing is that it fills, fills us with love. That is very, uh, very nice that the Holy Spirit will fill us with love. So Gilbert, you had something to say. I'm giving you a platform to respond. Just unmute yourself as you respond kindly. And so you raised your hand. Yes, Gilbert.
yes. you have said that God speaks to us. Yes. My question is sometimes we, sometimes, are you getting me? Yeah, I'm getting you. Sometimes, sometimes we get, uh, we get some voices in our, let's say our minds speaking that we go this way. And uh, again, we get another voice contrary to, to what you, you had earlier. Yes. Now, how do we know this Holy Spirit? Uh, how do you know the decision that we, sh we should take? Concerning that uh, you have said that the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Thank yes, you. Thank you. A very good question to the class, and I'll request that we answer that. That we get ourselves in a situation whereby there's this voice that tells you, go this direction, and this one tells you, go this direction. So, which one is the voice of the Holy Spirit? I believe, Gilbert, that's the question you've asked. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. So I'm, I'm giving a chance to anybody, just answer this one, that we get ourselves, do this, go this direction. So which one is always the, 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 the voice of the Holy Spirit? Is anybody? Okay, let me give a chance to, let me see who can give a chance to answer the question. Is anybody? Elder Moindi, I don't know whether you want me. Uh, uh, I thank you, thank you, Elder. That's a very good question from Brother Gilbert Koech. Uh, sometimes we have two, these two voices, but how can you be able to differentiate between this is the good spirit which is leading to the right direction? Allow me to read from the same same book, the book of Philippians chapter 2, uh, verse 16. As you hold the family to the word of life, and then I will be able to post on the day of Christ that I did not learn out of labor in faith. A very good question. Uh, how do you know? You know, we have what you call the Holy Spirit direct our character. So if you have this good Holy Spirit, will direct your character in living uh, as a Christian and to live like Jesus Christ. And uh, we see God gives us this Holy Spirit. When God has given us this Holy Spirit, uh, we, need to, uh, we need to know that through this old spirit, you will be able to do what? To know something which is good and something which is bad. But the question comes, how do you be able to do what? To differentiate between this good uh, spirit, uh, the spirit which will lead you to the right direction. Um, allow me to read something here. Uh, it was in the... In our lesson, it was saying this, the Holy Spirit is a teacher who desires to lead us into a deeper understanding of the scripture and to a joyful appreciation of the word of it. He brings the truth of God's word, mark this, he brings the truth of God's word to our attention and give us a flesh insight. I like that, uh, I like that statement. So the Holy Spirit will give us what he called insight into those truths so that our lives are characterized by faithfulness and living and loving obedience to the will of God. No one is able to explain the scripture without the aid of the Holy Spirit. But when you keep up the word of God with humble, teachable art, and angel of God who, uh, will be by your side to impress you with the evidence of the truth. I like that, Elder. Uh, uh, about no one is able to explain the scripture without the aid of the Holy Spirit. But when you take up the word of God with humble, teachable art, and angels of God will be by your side to impress you with evidence of truth. So you need to have what you call a heart which is humble. When you are having this heart which is humble, it will be able to teach you something which is good. So something which is good will tell you about the right direction you need to take. Thank you. Yes, uh, any other person who still want to contribute mm, on that? Anybody? Thank you. Uh, uh, let me also comment a little bit on this. The, uh, we get to learn something here that uh, 
just ways to recognize God's voice or the voice of the Holy Spirit working in us. Number one is that God's voice, or rather, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me say this. The volume of God's voice, is, he prefers to, to speak in quiet and uh, intimate ways. Take the instance of uh, God leading the Israelites, the, the Israelites through the wilderness. God tells, uh, God tells Moses that go and struck the, the rock so that water can come out of it. God's, God's voice, or rather, the volume of God's voice is very, is, he prefers to speak in the quiet, but intimate ways. Quiet, intimate ways. You know, Satan will always give you these things that are temporal. He'll always guide you into things that are temporal. But the voice of God is always very quiet. And he prefers to speak in quiet. God will not rebuke, will not shout at you that you must go in this direction. And the moment, and I want to say this, the moment we accept the Holy Spirit in our lives, I tell you for a fact. See, John 16 verses 13, he says, he always leads us to the truth and give us hope and confidence. We've learned that the voice of the Holy Spirit, God, that God's voice is prefers to speak in quiet. And also, we should, uh, for us also to get this, we should also learn the voice of the Holy Spirit. Learn or, or rather learn the language of the Holy Spirit. Mostly God, God prefers patience, patience in our lives. When you, when you want something, God will always require you to be very patient with him, with, uh, with, uh, with the life. In the, and the thing that he brings, it might not be instant. And there's this quotation that nothing concerning our peace is too small for God to notice. So let's not be worried. And there's no chapter in our history too dark for him to see. That's very interesting. So I'll say, God will always speak to us in a manner that is, it is intimate, intimate. And also, that uh, learn to recognize the sound of, we should also learn to recognize the sound of his voice, the sound of the voice of God. Let's always learn to recognize it. The point that we pray each and every time, we'll always recognize that voice. That's all I can say about that, unless somebody else uh, has uh, something to say. I'll please do so. Anybody? Nobody. I have a question. Okay, ask please. Yes, uh, you've said uh, the Holy Spirit's voice is a voice of reason. Yes. And and uh, how how does uh, Satan's voice come into? You know, you've said uh, each Satan's voice brings those uh, uh, those uh, temptations. And I believe they are uh, fleshy temptations. Yes. That are uh, man's weakness. Now I wanted to to know how 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 do you differ? Now he he asked how do you differentiate the good voice and the bad voice? And I wanted to know because you've said uh, deeply that Christ or the Spirit of God's voice is a voice of reason. Now how now does that of Satan now? How how does it convince someone? Of course, it is in flesh form, and it brings those, uh, uh, those uh, you know, worldly desires. But exactly how is it, how, uh, which voice does Satan bring now? Yes. For Christ is a voice of reason. Mm -hmm. Now, what about for Satan? Yes, for Satan. Somebody to, uh, to answer that. I just want to take us back to the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden. I want us to go quickly to the Garden of Eden. I hope we are there. That is Genesis chapter 3. And, uh, I want us just to go to verses 3. From, let's read from verses 2. It says, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And as Satan says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. That is now the voice of Satan, the voice that contradicts God what God wants. 
we said God, the voice of God, or rather, the voice of the Holy Spirit is that voice of reason, that voice that always wishes the, the uh, wishes man to be in the in the proper direction. But that voice of Satan is a voice of destruction. John ten verses ten. John ten verses ten. I want us to go quickly. We are really behind schedule. John ten ten. And it says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That is now the voice, uh, the, the difference between the voice of God and the voice of Satan. That for Satan, his main motive, his main motive or the, the, main, the main agenda that he has when he speaks is to steal and to kill and to destroy. That is the voice of Satan. But now the voice of God is for us to have life and that we may have it more abundantly. That is now the voice of God. Yes. Anybody with a, a, another question or rather anybody with a comment on the same? Let let me also add. Uh, I had a problem to unmute. Let me also add. Okay. From the book of uh, Romans, chapter eight, I'll read um, verse seven carefully, because the. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, I read from verse verse five. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit. The things of the spirit six for to be carnally carnally minded is death, but this but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subjected to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Uh, so to to add on that, I'll say that uh, it's true, the voice of the Holy Spirit is a voice of reason. And it leads to the to, to, to good and to the truth. But that is of the devil, it will lead to death and destruction. And very well in your mind, if you judge the two voices, you'll know, you'll surely know, by the help of the Holy Spirit, you surely know which voice to follow and which voice not to follow. So that uh, is what I'll answer Gilbert. I don't know if he's still with us. Gil Gilbert, I hope uh, you've uh, learned it, learned what you say we were saying. So I want us to get something here or to go into this aspect of uh, the last point that let us uh, uh, leads us to obedience. The Holy Spirit, I, I, I want us to get this point, enlightens us, leads us, mm, leads us to, leads us to Jesus, adds me, add, uh, leads us to the truth, gives us hope and confidence, gives us joy, fills us with love, leads us to obedience. So that is that. That is the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. And now we are done with the Sunday part very quickly. I want us to go uh, to, to the Monday part that is learning from Jesus. There's, there is no better way. And actually there is no any other way we can always practice the gospel of God rather than learning it from Jesus Christ. But we put the Bible into practice. Whatever Jesus Christ did, we apply it in our lives. Then we are good. To, we are good to be in that position of uh, following Christ. As he says, you see, during his temptation, each and every time, Christ used to quote the Bible. He said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? Let's read that word and put the Bible into practice uh, so that we learn to, to understand. That learning from Jesus, he used the scriptures when he was tempted, when he threw out the money changers from the temple, when he had to answer difficult questions. When you want to answer difficult questions, when you are found in, you find yourself in a situation whereby you are between, the, between a rock and a hard place, just always learn to quote the scripture. When tempted, quote the scripture, tell Satan, it is this and this. Just like uh, Gilbert asked a very good question, that when you are, how do we understand the, the, the word of God or the, the will of God or the voice of the Holy Spirit? Whenever we quote the scripture, we learn to understand that word of God. 
I'm going quickly because we are behind schedule. He could interpret the events he was living as the fulfillment of the scripture. I'd like to read something here from our lesson, just a, a brief quotation that says, if he had not known the exact words of the scripture and the context in which they appear, he could easily, easily have been deceived by the devil. That is it. If we want to be deceived by the devil, then let's stop reading the word of God. If we want to find ourselves in a situation whereby we don't, we are tempted and we fall to Satan's prey, Satan kills us, steals us, and destroys us. Uh, he steals us, kills us, and destroys us. Then let's stop reading the word of God. And that will be the end of us. And Satan will always marry as we get ourselves uh, in, the, that, in that situation whereby we cannot, we cannot, uh, we cannot, we cannot uh, understand his will. So we should also use the Bible when making decisions and when acting and when interpreting and when sharing with others. That is very interesting. That when you are sharing with others, please use the word of God. The problem that we have, we share with others, but forget to, to use the word of God. Uh, you'll excuse me, I'll give the chance to ask a question after we've finished. Uh, we go to the um, Jesus versus scripture. John 5 verses 45 and 47. I'll read that quickly. Mm, John 5 verses 45, it says, do not think that I will accuse you to be to, to the father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, he would have believed me. For he wrote of me, but if ye, be, if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? What a powerful message that, that Jesus Christ uh, brings there. That some people, some people claim that when Jesus spoke or that when Jesus said this word, he put his words in stark contrast to the words of the Bible. Some people thought that you now Jesus Christ had done away with the, the, the Old Testament or so. But he says, if you could not believe in his writings, then you, how shall you believe in my words? Because Moses himself wrote about God, uh, Jesus Christ himself. So he says, you could, they could, if they could not believe in him, then uh, if they could not believe in the writings of Moses, then even him definitely they were not going to believe in him. In him, Jesus did not abolish the Old Testament. And this thing always, this or this thing always bring a lot of controversies. Most people feel that Jesus Christ abolished the Old Testament, but he says he came to fulfill, to fulfill that which was written. There's no point that Jesus Christ abolished the Old Testament, but he came to fulfill uh, that which was written. Let's read Matthew five verses forty-three quickly. Uh, Matthew 5, but, uh, verses 43. Quickly, a quick one. It says that uh, ye have heard that it, that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your neighbor, your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And it, when you come to the, to the latter end of the chapter, it says, but ye therefore, ye therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. There's no point that Jesus Christ did away with the, the Old Testament or it pushed some words of the writings of the prophets away. The most important thing for us to learn is that Jesus Christ came to fulfill the scripture. However, Jesus didn't reject them at all. He gave them a broader meaning. That is interesting. When people don't understand something, let's give them a, a broader meaning and a broader meaning of something. And they, they will always accept uh, that. He clarified that he had not come to abolish the law. That is, if you read chapter 5, verse 17, which says, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am come to destroy. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Amen. So that is it, that Jesus Christ versus the scripture, he didn't come to destroy or abolish it. Then that is that. Devote time to it. That is uh, coming back to the Wednesday part, if I'm not wrong. Wednesday part, that. When it was the part, say, it says, 
quiet times with the word of God. Devote your time with it. And there's something I read in this, this lesson that is very sad. We find ourselves in those situation that uh, we, we, cannot, we cannot study the word of God uh, accurately or rather we don't, we've not formed that culture of studying the word of God. And it is awakening call for all of us that let's study this word. Let's use it in our lives. Devote time to it. Psalms uh, 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. That is our God, Psalms 46, 10. How can we know someone better by devoting time to them? That is, that is interesting. For me to know gift very well, for me to understand the, what his likes and the dislikes, I must devote my time to them. For us to understand the, the word of God, we must devote our time to it. Amen. That is it. If you don't devote your time to God, you will never or we will never understand it at all. We devote our time to it prayerfully and we'll always understand the word uh, of God. You remember J Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ during the solitary, uh, he would go to a solitary place and pray. He would go to a solitary place. Like you remember on Mount Olives, Jesus Christ took a distance and went to a solitary place and decided to offer his devotion unto the Father. It's interesting, when you, are, when you are alone or in the quiet times, devote that time to God. How can we know Jesus better? Devote your time to him. We should set time aside to seek Jesus through Bible study and prayer. And this is very sad. You realize that most of us, today we tend to be in this, in this category that if it is a Bible study, we tend to, 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 to run away from it, that all those things we know about them, all those things we've understood, but it's, it's saddening. There is no man that can go a moment, who can live a moment without prayer. We will not discover the truths in the Bible by just reading it quickly. You read it quickly. Okay, let me just read it. It's a, it, a born in a, in, a, in a Christian family, so we are used to reading the Bible, so I just have to read it. Let me read it will not discover the truths in it. You take your time, devote to it, and we understand, and we must read it carefully. And the good thing, the writer says, we must read it carefully, meditate on it, and let the Holy Spirit, Spirit speak to us and enlighten us. Don't force the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit do his work. We had said that. Let the Holy Spirit do the work and it will always enlighten you. Include a moment for study and prayer in your daily schedule. And uh, uh, this, this, this is just an advice to all of us. Let us include a moment for study and prayer in our daily schedule. I know we are in a, lock, we are in a lockdown or in, during this pandemic period, you realize that even reading the Bible, the last time we read it, maybe was when we were in school or when it was, there were still sessions for churches for churches uh, for people to attend and when we do that the writer says your thoughts will be linked to the fountain of life you will reflect jesus amen imagine you are reflecting jesus because jesus says be ye therefore perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect the moment we do this we'll always reflect jesus christ in our lives learn it bit by heart you have your word i have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. If we learn the word of God by our heart, then it will always be there. And uh, it will always sink there. That is Psalms 119 verses 11. Why is memorizing Bible passage uh, useful? Yes, memorizing the, the word of God, it is useful in that we get ourselves into temptations. And if we don't have those verses in our minds, We'll get, we'll tend to be distracted. Satan will mislead us. We can't know what is the, what the Bible says about maybe, is, let me say like typically about the Sabbath. We should memorize this Bible passage because it is useful unto us. And that one should be, uh, I know most of us, maybe the, the, we realize that the only verse that we can memorize very well is John 3.16. I'm not saying that verse is bad, is bad. It is a very great verse that Jesus Christ or God showed love unto the world. But you should always get, just take your time. I know it might be difficult, 
But if we can go to an examination room whereby we are required to get maybe the 100 marks, but you've mastered almost a thousand points in your mind, then even memorizing the word of God cannot be difficult. Take a verse. In this week, let me just give a challenge to all of us, and we'll give a challenge next Sabbath. Before we begin our lesson discussion, we'll give a challenge that you, you, you recite for us that verse, that, you, that memory verse. And that memory verse, I'll give us a verse that all of us are very familiar with. That is this Psalms 119. Just do it. Even if you'll only master the first verse, verse one, that is okay. If the whole week, the only one that you can master is verses one, Psalms 119 verses one, I tell you, it is going to change our reflection about life. Just master and write it down. Psalms 119, just master even verses one alone. For the whole week, there is no problem. It is going to change your life because it says that there is usefulness in mastering the word of God. And uh, that is very interesting thing that we need to, to understand that we can apply them to our various circumstances, our making decision, influence our thoughts and action, lift up our thoughts to God, then protect us against false ideas and interpretation. We can quote them when we need them. Even, even, if, we don't even if we don't have a Bible close at hand, they defend us from temptation. That is interesting about memorizing the verses. Let's memorize it. We've said there's an assignment. Next Sabbath, by next Sabbath, please master even a verse in Psalms 119. I'm not saying that you just stick yourself into Psalm 119. If you can go to Romans, if you can go to just memorize a verse, it will always play a critical role in your, in your life. You can see we can apply them in various circumstances. There are many different ways to learn the Bible, its teachings and its stories by heart. Music is one of them. Most people tend to apply the word of God. Or, you know, most composers, they just get, they lift it directly from the Bible. And it's that, in that, it helps a lot. When there is a verse in the Bible that you've mastered through music, that is interesting. You'll always quote it when in dire need of it. So much into that. Uh, we thank, I thank you for that. And I will read this last quotation as we, we get to the end. There should be a living, growing interest in storing the mind with Bible truth. The precious knowledge thus gained will build a barrier about the soul. Although assailed with temptation, there will be a firm trust in Jesus through the knowledge of him who hath called them to glory and to virtue. Amen. That when we do all these things, we'll always go get the knowledge of him who hath called them us to glory and to virtue. This, this is my humble plea that plea that let's always fill our minds with Bible truth. I know it might be difficult, but if we do do that, then we'll always be at a better position. Let me give an opportunity to anybody who has a comment. I said I didn't want to give a chance by then, but uh, I welcome a comment also. Question, Kindly, question. yes, or a question, no problem. Oh, I have a question. Yes. And the question comes, you see, in the, in, in the, uh, there are some people who, who apply the Bible, like in the political arena, like, mm. like in the recent past, I, I was, I was following the Senate, while they were, it was the host of Kipchumba Mool comment. Actually, all, all the supporters were using the Bible even, and even in the relationship event, you see that some of the people like quoting the book of Song, 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 Song. Song. You see, is it good now to apply that in reference to that? Thank you. Yes, uh, we'll answer that, then I'll give a chance to Elder Moindi also. I don't know if he has a question or a comment, he'll also answer us. Mm. <laughs> Elder, I have a, a general comment of the whole lesson okay, okay. About, about living by the word of God. Elder, kindly. In the day of Monday, I was. I'll request yeah. that uh, we answer his question, then I'll give you a chance to comment uh, after that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, um, uh, Jeff asked a question that you find uh, we we tend to quote the Bible even in contexts that uh, don't apply or in contexts that are not 
are not as as, uh, as uh, accurate as as such but we do quote the bible what what is your thought you get somebody lifting from the book of songs of solomon a verse and send it to the the one he or she loves yes what do you think Uh, happy Sabbath. Happy day. Oh, Elder, when we were leading lesson number seven, was talking about the language, text, and context. Mm. Whenever we pick, we need to see the context of that uh, that text, the language of that text, and the context of it some other people are just picking verses for their own what for their own benefit which is wrong and uh, something which i learned during that time uh, it was in the book of second second timothy chapter 2 first uh, chapter second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 to 17 that the, the bible is there to correct us how does the bible collect us then we just pick one word for what? For our own benefit. We need to study the context of that Bible. And uh, I remember when we were in high school, when we were doing English, English it was an excerpt. We were told that put this excerpt in the immediate what? In the uh, in the immediate context. You know, you need to read what was happening earlier on, what has happened, and what was happening later. So whenever we pick any first in the scripture. Let us see the context of that scripture. Let us see the text of that scripture. Also, let us see the language of that scripture. If we be focusing on those three things, at the end of the day, the Bible will be able to be explained well. The sure way to interpret a text is to understand this immediate context and then the context of the book harboring to the text. In this context, uh, in this, we'll be able to know what exactly we need to do. What we need to talk about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elder. Let me say this, then I'll also give a chance to Elder to, to give us his final comment on that. Mm. The, the word, if you go to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse 16, it says, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. Uh, through live furnished uh, and to all good works. You know, I want to say this. If we are quoting the Bible for our own gain or for our own mileage, that, you know, I quote for you this so that uh, maybe I realize that Jeff is my, is my enemy. Then I quote for him a verse and the people applaud me. Yes, you know, he has, given, he has, he has, a, he has really shot him hard. Then, then that one, it means that the Bible is losing its meaning. John chapter 3, uh, sorry, Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 should be, it says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. If we are giving something for instruction, correct. If you are giving something a verse for reproof, so that this person can change his mind or her mind to reflect the mind of God or the spirit of God, then that is a thumbs up. And for correction, if you are correcting an error in the society and you quote for somebody a verse and says that God said this or the prophet said this, then that one is well and good. If, if that correction is for the glory of God, you know, somebody can correct you into doing something wrong. That, you know, you're worshiping on the Sabbath. Let me correct you. You, you can you can always we can always go and do this on a sabbath things that no if the correction is for the glory of god then that is a thumbs up for instruction in righteousness if the bible has been used for instruction in righteousness then kudos continue doing that that is all i can say and uh i welcome elder moindi he had something to comment thank you thank you elder this lesson has been a very good lesson about how to interpret the scripture. In the day of Monday, was talking about learning from Jesus. We see Jesus used most of his time to study God's word. That's why when Satan was tempting Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was quoting exactly from the scripture. Also, Satan was quoting exactly from the scripture, but in an opposite way. In an opposite way. That's like... Um, 
we see this happens from the book of Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, it's about the fall of man. As there is this fall of man, Genesis, uh, Satan is only putting the word not. Surely you will not die. At the end of the day, man took that word, that forbidden tree. So we should be knowing that Satan understands the scripture. If we understand the scripture, we need to learn from what? We need to learn from Jesus Christ. If we need to learn from Jesus Christ, then we need to uplift God up and not man. We need to uplift it. The day of man, Tuesday was talking about Jesus versus the scripture. We see some people put the scripture according to their own ways. We see other people want only to touch few scriptures for their own benefit, mm -hmm. but that's not good. We need to put the exact scripture so that it can benefit every person. Jesus never came to abolish the law. That's what it was talking about it. I think Elder talked about it. We see there is what because the ceremonial law, the civil laws, and the moral laws. Jesus Christ was talking about it. Also, uh, Jesus do not report us like what you, what you see Satan was reporting. Example is the book of Job. Job, uh, Satan is approaching God and saying that, is there any person who is good on earth? God said, yes, there's somebody. We see Jesus Christ never reported us, but Jesus Christ is what? Is our advocate. The day of when I was talking about quiet times with the word of God. Do we have what you call the quiet time with the word of God? Let us not only study the word of God in a group, but let us study as an individual. How many times do you read the word of God in a week? How many do, times do you read the word of God daily? Some of us, maybe we only read the word of God when we are in church. After, uh, after church, we just close our Bible, we go home until the next week. So it, sh it should be good we study the word of God as an individual. When you are studying the word of God as an individual, then you will be able to get more points about this scripture. Then you will be able to get uh, many questions which you need to do in other Bible studies. We need to stand and give God respect. Uh, hence, we will win the battles. Uh, we think we have what you call the spiritual battle. This spiritual battle, we will only win it so long as we are anchored in the word of God. The finally, it was talking about the memory and song. I like on this day, in the day it was the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 11. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. We see song are things which uh, help us to remind what happened uh, earlier on. We see nowadays, maybe we see other people are just composing songs which are not even having what you call the scripture, but with uh, with songs which are loving the word of God, which is the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Scripture, they will be able to uplift God up. We see songs, uh, when we have challenges, we need to sing. These songs will help us to do what? To do away with those, with those, with those um, challenges we are having. Allow me to read this last, uh, last quote. Uh, sometimes we are in this earth. As we are in this earth, we have challenges. When we are having these challenges, each these challenges be, it may become too many. Then we forget the word, reading the word of God. But our brothers and sisters, we need to read the word of God daily. We need to practice God's word. If we are going to practice God's word, then we are going to be able in the end of the day will be the last. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Elder, for giving us the so the the, the the total part, the the whole part that we wanted to share. So that is it, and I will request that we we do come to a, a prayer. Uh, so I'll request Elder Franklin is here with us to pray with us as we close the session. Then uh, we'll sing some our one song then we get to go. So kindly, Elder Franklin, pray with us. Okay. okay. Let's move while all rest. We thank you. We give you all the glory and honor. Father, thank you for the gift of the Sabbath. Thank you for the wonderful lesson we are learning in your holy scriptures. Lord, even as we move to the next session, how I pray, please may you continue being with us while I pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you very much. I'll request Barry to lead us in one song, then we'll get into the divine service. So lead, Barry kindly lead us in uh, one song.
then we get into the divine service. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy, uh, happy we'll sing, day. Uh, 41 Kiswahili. 41 Kiswahili. Roho mtakati fusing. Roho mtakati fusing. Ongozi am. Utu shikem. Kono tuli so wasafi. Utu kukusi. Thank you very much. We'll uh, get into the divine hour and uh, see Pastor is here with us. I'll uh, pray, then I'll welcome him to, to also speak to God's children. So let's believe and we pray. Wonderful Father, you are the most gracious friend we've ever had. Your word is very clear that you take the Holy Spirit to lead us even as we study your word. And Lord, we pray that we may each and every time as we live on this earth, show us the direction that you want us to follow. And that everything that we do, Lord, may bring glory unto your life. And that we may always store our minds and filled with the Bible truths. And everything that we do, God, will always be a success. We call upon you this day. Let this Sabbath be a blessing unto each and every person. Those who are following us on Facebook and those who are going to watch this session after, after long.